Hey everybody, um, so I wanted to just kind of talk to you guys about your faith in Christ. It's got to be something that you really want to do. And you, if, you're, if you don't really want to serve the Lord, the Bible says that you, you can't come to him unless you're drawn that means you that means you can't accept him as your personal savior you can't repent you can't read your bible you can't listen to gospel music you can't put down worldly music r&b rap hip-hop country whatever it is um you can't stop looking at movies um you know anything goes if you're there and you don't want to be there, the reason why you're there is because you're not being drawn. And what you can do is that you can ask the Lord to draw you. It's just a simple prayer. You don't have to, you know, bombard the heavens or anything like that. Just honestly from your heart, ask the Lord to draw you. And then read a verse. I know you, you probably had someone in your family praying for you. Your grandmother, your mother, your grandfather, your father, or your dad, um, your sister, your brother, your aunt, uncle, your cousin. Someone prayed for you. And if you're like me in your 50s, right, it's your turn. It's your turn to pray for your kids, for your spouse, for your parents, for your cousins and aunts and uncles. It's, it's time to, it's past time for you to, to seek the Lord, to get closer to him, to be spiritual minded. And I should have known this a long time ago, but listening to a tape, some of you guys probably won't accept who it's from, so I'm not going to say who it's from, but listening to a tape today, he, exp he explains exactly how you worship in spirit and in truth. I've been hearing that you've got to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, but how do you do that? And it's not just, okay, when I, when I go to church. Say you go to church seven days a week. But that's only a few hours a day. If, if that. We're living, we live 24 hours a day. And of course, no, you can't read your Bible. You can't pray while you're sleeping. But you can ask God to give you a godly dream. And what you put in your body is going to manifest itself into a dream in the first place. So if you're not dreaming at all, you probably don't have anything on your mind. If you're dreaming and it's terrifying dreams, what are you watching? What's coming through your eyes during the day? Is it scary stuff? Is it stressful stuff? Is it stuff other people throwing on you? All of their baggage? You got to get that stuff off of you. And the best way to do that, of course, is to seek the Lord. And that is repenting of your sins every day. And don't act like you don't sin because you do every day. So you have to repent of your sins. Get that stuff under the blood. Ask the Lord to, to help you to decrease in that. And the way that you decrease in you is that you put you aside and you pick up this Bible King James Version, and you read it, you put it in yourself. I'm talking to me, mostly. But if you're like me and you are not there yet, the best way to get there is by turning the pages in your Bible. And, okay, I'm going to go with reading the Gospels is the way to salvation. Um, read the Gospels. But Jesus is found in the Old Testament too. So no matter where you pick this Bible up, it's Jesus talking to you. 
But to be saved, you do have to have salvation. And that is coming earnestly to the Lord, asking him to forgive you of your sins and then stop doing them. That's what that's what it means to turn from your sins and stop doing what you were doing. Of course, you're not going to stop everything, cold turkey. Who does that? But to be in a relationship with someone is an everyday thing. It's not, okay, I'm married to you and I'm mar I'm going to be your wife on Monday and Thursdays and on paydays. But the other days are mine. No, it's not like that. You're married to your spouse every day. And if you don't keep it fresh every day, their eyes is going to wander somewhere else. And the Lord, the way he does it for us is, He's, he's never going to move. He's never going to move. But he's not going to force you to do anything. He's, he's just going to allow you to do you. So if you're wondering why your life is so messed up, go in the bathroom because every bathroom has a mirror. And you look in that mirror. You don't beat yourself up about it, but you be honest with yourself and you say, hey, you have got to get it together. And if you need a journal, write a journal. Write all of the times that you've talked to the Lord and given him every single thing that you have on your mind, on your heart, because you can't carry that stuff yourself. You have to give it to someone who can carry it. And Jesus can carry it. He can carry everything. He's, he's already been beaten for your sicknesses, any sicknesses that you can name or spell, whatever. He's already paid the price for that, so you don't have to. But you can't say, I want to be healed, but you don't want to spend any time with Jesus. You don't want to give your life to him. It doesn't work like that. It's a relationship. It's a quick pro, pro quo. So I just want to encourage you guys, if you're... If you read a scripture today, tomorrow read two. The next day read three. Or do the chapters. Or it doesn't even take five minutes for you to have an honest, good prayer with the Lord. You won't be sorry that you did. Listening to gospel. Listen to scripture when you're driving turn off the radio turn off the TV because what you're putting in your body is what's going to drive your life is what's going to come out what you sow so shall you reap if you read the Bible you'll get more understanding you get more clarity ask the Lord Lord, give me wisdom. Give me understanding. He'll give it to you bountifully. Be encouraged. Seek the Lord before it's too late. I don't want anything to happen to you. I don't want anything to happen to me. And if you know me, pray for me too. <laughs>